Hello Warlords and Generals, this is Tab, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be leaping off the 40k lore from last time, where we discussed Slaanesh's realm, power, and influence, and origin. Today, we're going to be continuing with his demons, for when his insidious and subtle approach either fails, or Slaanesh simply wants something a more direct approach, he uses his demonic legions, and among the most numerous of the foot are the foot soldiers, the demonettes. Known also as maidens of ecstasy, bringers of joyous degradation, harbingers of endless delight, and seekers of decadence, these demons of Slaanesh are his courtiers and courtesans, fulfilling all of his whims when they are not out killing in his name. Filling out his throne room, indulging in lavishness and pleasures truly depraved and perverse, they also act as his messengers into real space, being the forefront of Slaanesh's forces as they dance elegantly around their opponents. When they fight, they move with an unnerving speed and grace that makes some Eldar movements seem sluggish, able to slice an opponent several times before they even register it, aiming for weak points in armor and exposed flesh. The features and strange scent of these creatures also assists in combat. Being androgynistic, they have both male and female features. The slight smell that surrounds them is a perfume that deludes the senses, making their victims believe they are beautiful and irresistible to those who do not have the strong wills to, to resist it. Their victims often surrendering themselves to these beautiful creatures only to realize that these creatures is a horrific as it laughs in ecstasy as it cuts their prey to ribbons. Even the lords and champions of Slaanesh are not immune to the allure of these demons. A champion may summon one or several uh, to enhance his power or favor only to find themselves a pawn of these vile creatures. Extremely attuned to the nature of Slaanesh, not only in getting extreme ecstasy when inflicting pain and pleasure upon others, they also have the ability to, eventually, being able to discern a mortal's deepest desires. Once they find it, it all it takes is a whisper, some honeyed promises and lies to turn a once proud mortal into a pet for them to toy with. And those are the base demon nets. Next, we'll be moving on to the units known as Seekers. Particularly cunning and ambitious demon nets, and even mortals may seek out to tame a steed of Slaanesh, the strange and elegant mounts of Slaanesh. Slender and agile, lithe creatures with thin heads and a long whip-like tongue flickers out of their slender face. Their bodies are supported by muscular, bird-like appendages, allowing them to lift and gallop through grace and speed, almost as if they had wings. The skin of these creatures shifts constantly, going from sleek purple to a dull blue to a dark pink. Taming such a creature is quite a challenge, as they are inconceivably fast and have enough stamina to run forever if the need arises. Roaming the golden fields, infinite fields, these creatures represent the aspect of freedom of Slaanesh, making them fiercely independent demons mentally. If one would tame one, they would need cunning and guile, using the innate curiosity of the steeds. The steeds have a heightened sense, and anything they have not experienced will attract their curiosity. When the steed approaches the new scent they have not experienced before, this is when the demonette or mortal will mount the steed. They then have to lull the creature into calming down while being bucked and avoiding the whip-like tongue and powerful bird talons. Should the demonette succeed, they become a seeker of Slaanesh. These cavalry units break light units and are the bane of scouting units, for few can outpace the quicksilver speed of the steeds of Slaanesh mounts. Steeds have a swollen sensorium, allowing them to sense emotions to the point they could taste them, part of what makes them such curious beings, but also helps them track enemies even better than normal. 
This, on top of the venom of the tip of their tongues, make them great hunters as they lash the back of their running victims' necks. As they taste the emotion and soul of their victims, makes them shudder in delight. And few ever escape the sleekers when they are on the hunt. And that is the fast-moving cavalry unit of the Slanesh legions. We're now going to move on to their monsters, the fiends of Slanesh. Also known as the Rams of Slanesh, Chimeral Leapers, and Fiends of Exalted Excess, these chimerical horrors, born of Slanesh's dreams, made manifest while he sleeps. While most demons are unique, differing between obvious and subtle ways, fiends, however, almost stay completely consistent, torso and legs made of a human, ending in talons, or hooves. One set is inverted, a long, sinuous tail ending in a stinger with a heavy, potent venom, head the mix of a bull and an aardvark or anteater, and the arms ending in two demonic claws. These creatures are true nightmares to behold. Now you would think with a consistent form described, most would run from in them instantly. However, fiends produce a musk whose chemical and smell lull most into a dreamlike state, falling into a deep sleep as the fiends approach. The fiends will s approach their helpless victims and take their time snipping limbs off and rend them to pieces. It takes an immense will to resist a cloud of musk's influence, even if they do and survive the approaching fiends' assault or manage to escape, they are left with an empty feeling. A sweet scent just out of reach type feeling haunts their every waking moment. When called to war, fiends often charge alongside chariots and seekers into battle, moving at an unnatural pace, a scuttling gait almost. Swiping arms back and forth, they are not graceful creatures when they get into combat. When they charge, fiends let out a song that eat to each other. This somehow discordant yet melodic tune drifts its way into the warp, for it is both psychic and sonar. This is true. This tune will find its way to Slanesh, who lays back as he enjoys the music. This song cannot be heard by most, except by psychers, not blessed by Slanesh, whose eyes bleed and eardrums rupture for the unprepared and the weaker psychers on the field of battle. Now with the general foot soldiers, monsters, and cavalry out of the way, we're going to cover the war machines of Slanesh, with starting with a Hell Flayer. These strange war machines are pulled by seekers and function like a lawnmower, wood chopper, and a chariot combined. They were not always used for war, however. Due to the constant warfare of the Realm of Chaos and the Great Game, Corpses and remnants of the Utter God's minions strewn across Slanesh's fields. The task of cleaning this up is left to Hell Flares piloted by demonettes who have displeased Slanesh, but not in an extreme manner to give an extreme punishment. For demonettes are selfish creatures, and the tasks of mincing the corpses to bite-sized pieces for the strange flora of Slanesh's realm is a drudgerous and boring. Therefore, agony to them. This role was once seen as a punishment, became a glorious reward when two demonettes assigned to the chariot brought one to a battle not after, but during the battle. As the shredded through the Nurgle forces, grinding them to bits, they felt the pain and fear, and reached heights that no other demonette had ever reached before. The emotion they fed on increased the speed of the chariot as well, causing it to go so fast that light stopped reflecting off of it, turning it invisible. So you can add invisible maniac lawnmower to uh, the horrors of the 40k universe. After this, they were seen being used in battle more often. Of the two demonettes who created this scenario, Slanesh has punished them, for they disobeyed him. These two demonettes were turned into marble statues, placed at the start of the walkway to the palace of Slanesh, turned away, forever away, and never again to bask in the glories of their god Slanesh. 
And then there is the Exalted Chariot, larger and equipped with more blades and pulled by heavily armored steeds of Slanesh than a standard Hellflayer, where a Hellflayer will mince corpses and enemies, an Exalted Chariot will turn them into a red mist instantly. These contraptions that only a madman could create also have inscrolled runes on the blades, causing souls to be grabbed by the blades and causing them to be dragged even further into the blender on wheels. No, that was a short entry, but I mean, that's literally all it was. It's just a bigger hell flare pulled by more seekers. Literally it. And that covers all the non-leaders of the Legions of Slanesh. So as we do with these videos, we try to start from the bottom and move our way up slowly to the top. And with that, we're going to start with the bottom of the top with the Heralds of Slanesh. Out of all the Chaos Gods, it is Slanesh who is the most like mortal rulers in his giving of favor and ruling, being attended by those he favors, the Heralds. Outside of the Keeper of Secrets, a demonette may become a herald, an empowered and favored servant of Slanesh, who are his servants and attendants within his court. Singing and dancing for his entertainment, massaging his perfect body with oils, and even serving him wine and other luxuries, the greater the favor, the closer to Slanesh they are allowed, some even allowed on his great dais. The role of the courtier is not the only role these heralds serve, but as lieutenants within the armies, acting as field commanders to the Keeper of Secrets, the only servants to outshine the heralds within the Legion's hierarchies. They also act as corruptors, and the art of subterfuge is their talent they excel at, often being the ones to seduce weak-willed mortals to the will of, to, of their master. They also corrupt planetary governors, establish new cults, and even kill commanders in their sleep, trimming the enemy's chain of command. As deadly warriors on the battlefield, but also masters of deception, manipulation, and subtlety, these creatures are among the greatest tools within Slanesh's legions for corrupting and bringing his decadence across the universe. Now on the tabletop, you can have a herald on foot, on a seeker, or on a chariot, but this has no consequence on the lore in terms of differentiating the Heralds, unlike the other armies of Chaos. However, there are two other Heralds that I am aware of with different classifications and roles on the battlefield and within Slanesh's court. And of these two, I'm going to start with the Infernal and Raptress. A herald may become an infernal raptress, a herald who plays a harp made by the victims of her music. In battle, these powers manifest as song that thins the veil, allowing for easier summoning of Slanesh's legions, as well as sending sonic shockwaves to tear opponents to ribbons. It when on, not on the battlefield, they play for Slanesh, a discordant and haunting tone, with moans of the harp adding to the strange sonnet that Slanesh enjoys while lounging within his pleasure palace. This next entry, it's quite unclear on if they are heralds or not, but I put it within the herald category because, well, it's an HQ, but yeah. Anyway, this next entrance is the Contorted Epitome. As we mentioned in the Hellflare entry, demonettes are selfish creatures, even more so when they become heralds. However, if they see a mutual benefit in it, they will see them work together in certain circumstances, such as when a mirror of absorption is taken from the Pleasure Palace of Slanesh to be piloted by two heralds to become a contorted epitome. These mirrors are semi-sentient, are used to absorb psychic energy of the enemy psychers. They can then use this energy against their foes, turning the benefit of warp users into a detriment for the foes of Slanesh, regardless on if these foes be mortal or demonic. And with that, we've covered all the heralds. Now we move on to the most vile of Slanesh's demons, the Keeper of Secrets. 
the top of the food chain, and Slanesh is most powerful and favorite of the Slaneshi demons. The greater demons, known as Keeper of Secrets, are beguiling and vile creatures, known as other titles as the Bringer of Temptations or Feasters of Pain, are hermaphroditic in aspect. However, among greater demons, these ones are the most varied in appearance. No two Keeper of Secrets are the same. Some have bejeweled heads with a crown of horns, others have a bovine-like head. All of these creatures are true eldritch terrors to behold. One look upon them is enough to instantly steal all self-will of most mortals. Being several heights of a human, usually having four arms, two ending in crab claws, while other two holding anything from a shield, a sword, a whip, or a spear. Though these creatures are horrid in their aspect, their musk deludes the senses and makes most believe they are beautiful and benevolent, only assists in keeper slaughtering their foes. Speaking of their combat capabilities, their limbs are slender and elegant, yet hideously strong, making them lightning fast for creatures of their size, often making them seek out champions to duel and either kill or corrupt them to Slanesh's will. For few things give a Keeper of Secrets than more pleasure than corrupting heroes pure of heart to the influence of Slanesh. Physical violence is the trademark of the Keepers, for Slanesh will not send one unless absolutely necessary, and gratuitous amounts of violence are required, for the pleasure of bloodshed is a sliver of Slanesh's aspect. When they do, they lead the legions of excess personally. They lead the hordes of demonettes, using them to corner heroes for the keeper to have their fun with. Though murder and sensual manipulation are not the only tools at its disposal, it can also call upon the powers of the warp to use psychic powers, using channeled powers of the warp to subdue enemies by overloading their pain and pleasure sensory, smiting foes, or even allowing allies to move and fight faster. All of this, and the most dangerous factors of the Keeper of Secrets, is its intelligence and its ability to hear every secret ever said at once, and to know the deepest desires of any mortal it comes across. This combination gives it the knowledge, wit, and silver tongue ability to corrupt all but the most stalwart of individuals. These demons will stab at mental defenses and, and with promises of indulgence in the mortal's exact desires, penetrating their will with shame and desire. All of these tools make for one of the most horrid entities to encounter that spawns from the warp. Slanesh's insidious will given manifested form to spread his corruption and pleasure for all to indulge in. And with that coverage completed, we've reached the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed this coverage of Slanesh's demons. Next, we're going to be covering his named champions in the 40k setting, at least those with rules. I'd like, uh, if you like this video, please leave a like. If you want to leave a comment on discussing the content of this video, then please do so. And subscribe if you want to see more from me. I try to upload a video once a week of 40k or ALS content. And if, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please have a nice day and happy wargaming.